Welcome back to the deep dive. You know I love a good market mystery. Oh, absolutely. And today we're diving into one that's fascinated investors for ages. Mm. Market cycles. Yeah. You sent us this research paper, Momentum Turning Points, and it tackles a really intriguing question. Can we actually use something called momentum investing to predict those market swings. Yeah, this paper takes a deep dive into time series momentum strategies and how they can potentially give us a glimpse into the future of market trends. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Okay, so let's unpack this. I get that markets go up and down, but what exactly are these momentum strategies? Well, imagine you're trying to figure out which way a flock of birds is going to fly. Uh-huh. You wouldn't just look at one bird, right? right. You look at the overall movement of the whole flock. Momentum strategies are kind of like that. Okay. They look at past market returns to identify the prevailing trend, hoping to catch a ride on that wave. Interesting. So it's all about riding the wave. But this paper talks about slow and fast momentum. Does that mean some waves are better for surfing than others? Exactly. Slow momentum is like observing the long rolling waves that form over time. It analyzes returns over the past 12 months to capture that big picture trend. Gotcha. Fast momentum, on the other hand, is like catching a quick choppy wave. Uh Uh-huh. It focuses on the most recent month's returns reacting to those short-term market shifts. Okay, so slow momentum is about spotting the long-term trend while fast momentum is all about reacting to those quick market jitters. Yeah. But the paper seemed to suggest that combining these approaches could be even more powerful. That's right. The researchers found that when you blend slow and fast momentum, you get a more nuanced view of the market. It's like looking at both the direction and the speed of those birds. I like that analogy. So it's like having a speedometer and a compass for the market. But how does all of this connect to those mysterious market cycles everyone talks about? Well, that's where it gets really interesting. The paper identifies four distinct market cycles. Bull, correction, bear, and rebound. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, these cycles are determined by whether those slow and fast momentum signals agree or disagree. Hold on. So you're telling me that by looking at whether these momentum signals are aligned or clashing, we can actually figure out which market cycle we're in. Precisely. Think of it like this. When both slow and fast momentum are pointing upwards, it's like a confirmation that the market is in a bull phase. Oh, okay. Everyone's optimistic. Prices are rising. Things are looking rosy. Okay, that makes sense. So a bull market is when both signals are giving us a thumbs up. But what happens when one of those signals starts flashing a warning sign? Well, that's when things get a bit more tricky. Okay. Let's say slow momentum is still positive, indicating that long-term trend is up, but fast momentum suddenly turns negative. Uh That's a classic sign of a correction. Okay. A temporary dip within an overall upward trend. Ah, so it's like a reality check for the market. Everyone gets a little too excited, things get a bit overheated, and then boom, a correction. But what about those dreaded bear markets? When do those come into play? Bear markets are when both slow and fast Momentum signals are pointing downwards. It's like a double whammy of negativity. It's a sign that the market is in a prolonged downturn and investors are feeling pessimistic. Got it. So a bear market is when both signals are waving red flags. But what about that fourth cycle, the rebound? That sounds more hopeful. A rebound is that glimmer of hope within a downtrend. Okay. It happens when slow momentum is still negative, suggesting we're not out of the woods yet. Uh But fast momentum turns positive signaling a potential shift in sentiment. You might start to see positive earnings surprises in struggling sectors, a sign that fast momentum is picking up, even though the long-term outlook is still uncertain. That's a really interesting point. So it's like those first green shoots pushing through the ground after a long winter. But why should I care about all of this? Does knowing which cycle we're in actually help me make better investment decisions? 
Absolutely. Each cycle is associated with different levels of risk and potential return. Okay. Bear markets, for instance, are typically associated with negative expected returns. Makes sense. Not exactly a great time to go all in on risky investments. Right. On the other hand, bull markets and rebound cycles can offer more attractive opportunities for growth, although you still need to be mindful of those pesky corrections. So it's like having a roadmap for the market. Knowing which cycle we're in can help me adjust my strategy, be more cautious during those bear markets, and maybe even capitalize on those rebound opportunities. That's the idea. But what's even more fascinating is that these market cycles aren't just about stock prices going up and down. They're actually linked to the broader economy. Well, you mean these cycles, which are based on stock market data, can tell us something about what's happening in the real world. That's right. The research dug into a bunch of macroeconomic indicators, things like employment, production, consumer spending, mm -hmm. and found a pretty intriguing connection. Yeah. Turns out bear markets tend to pop up more frequently in the early stages of recessions when the economic news is looking grim. Okay, that makes sense. So bear markets are like a reflection of those economic storm clouds gathering on the horizon. But what about bull and rebound markets? Do those coincide with good economic news? Well, it's a bit more nuanced than that. Okay. The research found that bull and rebound cycles, those signaling positive returns, often become more prominent later in recessions. Oh. It's almost like the market starts to sniff out a recovery before it's even visible in the economic data. Wow, that's pretty counterintuitive. So even when things seem bleakest, the market might be picking up on subtle signs of a turnaround like an increase in building permits suggesting a potential bull market in the construction sector. Exactly. It challenges the traditional view that risk premiums are always higher during tough times. That's amazing. So these cycles aren't just abstract concepts. They're like a window into the overall health and sentiment of the economy. Precisely. And remember how we talked about blending those slow and fast momentum strategies? Yeah. Well, the paper takes that idea a step further and explores what they call intermediate speed momentum strategies. Intriguing. So instead of just picking slow or fast, you're crafting a custom blend by creating your own investment smoothie with the perfect balance of ingredients. That's a great analogy. And just like with a smoothie, the right blend can be more satisfying, or in this case, more profitable right. than just using one ingredient. Okay, I'm hooked. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out the right blend? Is it a 50-50 split between slow and fast, or is there a secret formula? The paper delves into the nitty gritty of finding that optimal blend. Okay. It turns out it's not a one size fits all solution. Yeah, I figured. The ideal mix depends on the market cycle and something called noise. Those random price fluctuations that can cloud the overall trend. Think of noise as the market chatter. All those daily ups and downs that are driven by headlines, rumors, and short-term trading. Momentum strategies aim to cut through this noise and identify the underlying trend. Ah, so you're saying the right blend can help filter out that market chatter and give you a clearer view of the actual trend. Exactly. And what's even more interesting is that the paper suggests that blending these strategies can lead to smoother returns and potentially even higher risk-adjusted profits compared to using either the slow or fast approach alone. It's like finding that sweet spot between riding the waves and steering clear of those choppy waters. Okay, so blending sounds like a pretty smart move, but the paper also mentions something called dynamic speed selection. That sounds even more advanced. It is. Imagine if you could adjust the blend of slow and fast momentum on the fly uh -huh. based on the prevailing market cycle. Let's say you've analyzed historical data and found that during periods of high inflation, a blend of 70% fast momentum and 30% slow momentum has performed best. As inflation rises, your model would automatically adjust your portfolio towards this blend. Whoa. So instead of sticking with a fixed blend, you're constantly adapting to the market's mood swings, kind of like a chameleon changing colors. You got it. This dynamic approach, while more complex, has the potential to further enhance returns and minimize risk. Okay. The paper outlines a method to determine the optimal blend for each market cycle based on historical data. Okay, this is blowing my mind. We've covered so much ground already, from understanding those different momentum strategies to the concept of market cycles and how they're linked to the economy. We've even touched on dynamic adjustments to these strategies. Who knew there was so much to unpack in this research paper? Absolutely. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Wait, there's more. 
Oh yeah. We've just scratched the surface of this fascinating research paper, and now I'm curious to hear your thoughts. What stood out to you so far? I have to say, um, I'm really intrigued by this idea that market cycles aren't just these like random ups and downs. Yeah. They're actually connected to these broader economic trends and can potentially be predicted using these momentum strategies. It's like a whole new way of looking at the market. Yeah. But I'm still a little fuzzy on how to actually apply all of this to my own investment. So it <laughs> sounds a bit theoretical. That's a great point. Let's make it more concrete. Imagine you're considering investing in a tech company. Okay. And you notice both slow and fast momentum signals are flashing red, pointing downwards. Yeah. What would that tell you? Well, based on what we've discussed, that sounds like a classic bear market scenario. Maybe it's not the best time to be piling into tech stocks, right? Exactly. Especially if those negative signals are aligned with some bad economic news, like a drop in consumer spending on electronics. Exactly. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to avoid tech altogether. Right. But it might be wise to be more selective or consider alternative investments that are less sensitive to economic downturns. Makes sense. Now let's flip the script. Suppose you're looking at a company in the renewable energy sector. Okay. And you see both slow and fast momentum are positive, but there's a sudden dip in fast momentum. Okay, so that sounds like a potential correction within a bull market. The long-term trend for renewable energy might still be positive, but there's this short-term blip causing some jitters. Precisely. Now, instead of panicking and selling your shares, you might view this as just a normal part of the cycle, remembering that corrections are often temporary. You might even see it as a buying opportunity, knowing that the long-term outlook is still favorable. This is where understanding those momentum signals can really come in handy. I see what you mean. It's like having that extra layer of insight to help you ride out those market waves without getting seasick. But what about those intermediate speed strategies we talked about? Mm -hmm. How would I actually use those in practice? Let's say you're feeling a bit more adventurous and want to try crafting your own momentum strategy. Remember, it's all about finding that optimal blend of slow and fast momentum based on your risk tolerance and the prevailing market conditions. Uh -huh. You might start with a 50-50 blend, then adjust it as you gain experience and observe how the market responds. So it's a bit like experimenting in the kitchen. Yeah. You start with a basic recipe, then tweak it to create something truly unique and delicious. I like that analogy. But just like with cooking, it's important to do your research and understand the ingredients. There are plenty of resources available online and in books that can help you delve deeper into specific momentum strategies and even backtest them against historical data. That's reassuring. I was imagining having to manually calculate all those momentum signals. It sounds like there are tools out there that can do some of the heavy lifting for me. Absolutely. Technology has made things much easier. And there are platforms that can track momentum signals and even help you automate some of the trading decisions. But remember, even if you're not ready to dive headfirst into crafting your own strategy, simply being aware of which market cycle we're in can be incredibly valuable. You mean, even without becoming a full-blown momentum investing guru, this knowledge can still give me an edge? Exactly. Let's say you know that bear markets are often associated with negative economic surprises. That awareness might make you more cautious about investing in certain sectors that are particularly vulnerable to those downturns. Maybe you hold back on investing in luxury goods when consumer confidence is low, or steer clear of construction stocks when interest rates are skyrocketing. That's a really practical example. So it's not just about blindly following the momentum signals, but about combining that knowledge with your understanding of the broader economic landscape. Right. It's like having a superpower that lets you see beyond those short-term market fluctuations and anticipate those bigger shifts. I wouldn't call it a superpower, but it definitely gives you a more informed perspective. And the more you learn about these cycles and momentum strategies, the more confident you'll feel navigating the market's ups and downs. That's exactly what I was hoping for, to feel more in control and make decisions based on data and analysis rather than just gut feeling. But now for the moment of truth. Let's dive into the research results and see which momentum approach actually delivers the goods in the real world. This is where things get really exciting. The paper goes deep into analyzing the performance of various momentum strategies, and what they found is pretty eye-opening. Okay, I'm on the edge of my seat. Does slow and steady win the race? Or does the quick and nimble approach take the crown? Hmm. Or could it be our custom blended strategy that comes out on top? Well, it turns out that our intuition about blending was right on the money. 
The research shows that intermediate speed strategies, those that combine slow and fast momentum, tend to outperform either approach in isolation. So our smoothie analogy holds up. But what's driving this outperformance? Is it just about smoothing out the bumps in the road, or is there something more to it? Smoothing out volatility is definitely a factor, especially during those correction and rebound phases when the market signals are a bit mixed. But it goes beyond that. Intermediate speed strategies seem to be better at picking the winning bets, those associated with bull and bear markets, while sidestepping those bad bets that often pop up during those tricky turning points. So they're like a savvy investor who knows when to hold them and when to fold them. Exactly. They're not just blindly chasing the trend, but using a more nuanced approach to navigate those market shifts. The paper even highlights a specific intermediate speed strategy they call MED, which stands for medium, and the results are impressive. MED. Oh, sounds like the Goldilocks of momentum investing. Not too slow, not too fast, just right. That's a great way to put it. The research found that MED has historically achieved a higher risk-adjusted return, measured by something called the Sharpe Ratio, compared to either slow or fast momentum on their own. Wow, so MED really is the MVP of momentum investing, but can it actually beat the market, you know, generate those alpha returns that everyone dreams of? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the paper also delved into the concept of alpha, which is that measure of excess return above and beyond what the market delivers. Right. And the findings are pretty compelling. Okay, you've got my attention. Tell me more. The research shows that intermediate speed strategies, like MED, can generate statistically significant alpha. In simpler terms, they've historically been able to deliver returns that are higher than what you'd expect from just investing in the market as a whole. That's pretty amazing. So it's not just about keeping pace with the market, but potentially even outpacing it. I'm sensing a theme here. Blending slow and fast momentum seems to be the secret sauce. It definitely seems to have an edge. And remember, we even talked about that super sophisticated concept of dynamic speed selection, where you're constantly tweaking the blend based on the prevailing market cycle. Oh, yeah, that strategy where you're basically a market chameleon adapting to every twist and turn. But wasn't that a bit too complex for the average investor? It definitely requires more in-depth analysis and potentially some quantitative skills. But the paper did present a method for figuring out the optimal blend for each cycle using historical data. Right. And while the findings are still preliminary, they suggest that this dynamic approach could potentially boost returns even further. Wow, that's pretty mind-blowing. It's at the holy grail of momentum investing, finding that perfect blend that maximizes returns no matter what the market throws at you. It's an exciting area of research. And who knows what the future holds? Maybe one day we'll all have personalized momentum strategies that adjust in real time. That would be incredible. I have to say, this deep dive has been a real eye-opener. We've gone from understanding those different momentum strategies to exploring those mysterious market cycles and how they're connected to the economy. We've even delved into the nitty-gritty of how these strategies perform in the real world and glimpsed into the future of dynamic speed selection. I feel like I've leveled up my investing knowledge. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you and to our listeners. Until next time, keep learning and keep exploring the world of finance. <laughs>